Oh boy. <laughs> Here we go. We had to cover this one at some point. Uh, this, if you're not a soccer fan, uh, I encourage you to stick around for this video. This is essential sports history knowledge. And if you do know uh, about the hand of God, we're also going to be talking about um, the goal of the century and the uh, the Argentina-England rivalry. So hopefully something for everyone in this video. Um, and in the comments, I want you to let me know what you think of the modern use of uh, VAR to check goals. Could get spicy in the comments. <laughs> but here we go with some background. So we usually attribute um, the beginning of the Argentina-England rivalry um, going back to the 1966 World Cup. Uh, the two teams played a, a quarterfinal game at Wembley, and this is a game that Argentina uh, refers to as El Ropo de Siglo, the theft of the century. And that's because England actually won 1-0, um, thanks to a goal from Jeff Hurst. But that goal is disputed um, by Argentina. Because they claim that that goal was offside. But the big moment of the match um, was actually Argentina's captain, Antonio Ratin, being sent off uh, for a second caution, what we today would call a second yellow card. And Argentina considers that sending off to be unfair. From the outside, you could see why. Um, he basically got the caution for arguing with the referee, um, arguing a, a teammate's foul. Um, Rettin eventually had to be escorted off of the pitch by police because he refused to leave himself. And he refused because he claimed that he was trying to get an interpreter to come on to the field so that he could discuss the foul with the German referee. And, you know, he was captain. It's sort of part of the job description. But anyway, while he's like, walking off the, the pitch, he sort of tugs at um, the corner flag and on the corner, the corner flag was a Union Jack. So that was seen as a sort of, you know, aggressive, um, aggressive move. So then after the match, um, England's manager, Alf Ramsey, he refused to let his players swap jerseys with the Argentinian players. And he later described the Argentinians, or I think, yeah, I think it was specifically the Argentinians as animals. And so that just caused outrage in Argentina. And then another 
huge factor in the rivalry um, leading up to the Hand of God controversy is the Falklands War. Uh, the Falkland Islands are a British territory, um, British overseas territory in the South Atlantic, sort of neighboring Argentina. And Argentina claims that it is their territory. They uh, refer to to the Falklands as uh, Islas Malvinas. And in April of 1982, Argentina invaded the Falklands. Britain then sent a naval task force to retake, recapture the islands. And that led to hundreds of deaths for both the British and uh, the Argentines, but more so, um, more losses were suffered by Argentina. So a lot of emotion and pain was brought to the soccer pitch. This was uh, the, the two nations' first meeting in a soccer match since um, the incident in the Falklands. So, this takes us to uh, 1986. The World Cup is in Mexico. And Argentina and England are meeting in the quarterfinals. The game was played on June 22nd at the Azteca. The referee is Ali bin Nasser, and there's an attendance of about just over 114,000 people. So in the first half, both teams get chances. And actually, Argentina dominates possession. But we go to halftime with a scoreless game. And six minutes into the second half. Diego Maradona, he's Argentina's captain. Again, if you're if you're a soccer fan, you already know this. Um, but if you're not, he's one of the goats. I mean we talk about Messi today. Maradona came before Messi. So, Maradona, six minutes in to the second half, he cuts inside from the left and passes the ball to Jorge Valdano, and he continues his run into the box. Now, the pass to Valdano was kind of behind him a little bit. So it bounces off of him and towards Steve Hodge, an England midfielder. And Hodge tries to clear the ball, but it sort of bounces off of, of his foot and goes the wrong way. It goes into the box, um, into the penalty area where Maradona has made his way with his run. Uh, England's goalkeeper is Peter Shilton, and he sort of runs for the ball. You know, leaves his net, leaves leaves the goal area to punch the ball clear. But Maradona, who's actually eight inches shorter than Shilton, he gets to the ball first. The ball bounces 
off Maradona and into the goal. And it's now 1 0. Maradona sort of looks to make sure that the goal is given. Ben Nasser says it's good. And Maradona celebrates. Immediately, um, England players start protesting the goal. They call for a handball. Ben Nasser checks with the second lineman to confirm the goal. The linesman says it's good. The goal is given. Goal stands. End of story. Now, this was the 80s. We didn't have like 30 cameras all looking at the goal, all from different angles and all with slow-mo technology. But a Mexican photographer named Alejandro Ojeda Carvajal, he caught the moment in a photo which leaves no room for argument and I'll put it up on the screen now objectively that ball is touching his hand um, at the post-game press conference Maradona was asked about the goal and he said that the goal was scored a little with the head of Maradona and a little with the hand of God and that's where the infamous name for that goal comes from, the hand of God and that goal really played a part in intensifying the rivalry between Argentina and England. Um, you know, Cesar Luis Menotti, an Argentinian player, he said, people said, great, better, much better that the goal was so unjust, so cruel, because it hurt the English more. Um, after he retired from his playing career, Maradona, retired in 1997, um, wrote an autobiography in the year 2000. And in that book, um, he wrote, Now I can say what I couldn't at that moment, what I defined at that time as the hand of God. What hand of God? It was the hand of Diego. Then, five years later, and 19 years after the Hand of God goal, in 2005, Maradona hosted a TV show. And again, he confirmed that he's open about uh, the goal being scored with his hand. And that sort of stirred up the whole controversy again across the world. It was such a huge moment. And um, notably, for The Sun, which is a British newspaper, they called it an apology when they reported on it. But Peter Shilton, uh, the keeper from that game, he rejected this so-called apology, saying that it was too late. But then Maradona came out and said it was never an apology, and that the, the son misquoted him. He said, I never spoke of forgiveness. I said only that the story could not be changed. History is written that I do not have to apologize to anyone because it was a football game 
in which there were 100,000 people in the Azteca Stadium, 22 players, that there were two linesmen, that there was one referee. That Shelton speaks up now, and he, ha he had not noticed, the defenders had to tell him. So the story is already written, nothing can change it. And that was what I said. I never apologize to anyone. Besides, I don't have to apologize by making a statement to England. For what? To please whom? What pisses me off the most is that they repeat this in Argentina and talk to people who know me. They talk about contradictions. At 47, I think that apologizing to the English is stupid. So Maradona's basically saying, you know, I'm not denying that my hand touched the ball. I never meant for that to happen, but it did happen, and the goal was given. It's done. There's no going back. There's no taking it back. And then, finally, in 2019, in the documentary, uh, Maradona also linked uh, the scandal and that match, more generally, um, to the Falklands War. Uh, like like Minotti had before him, he said, um, It was tough. The hype made it seem like we were going to play out another war. I knew it was my hand. It wasn't my plan, but the action happened so fast that the linesman didn't see me putting my hand in. The referee looked at me and said, Goal. It was a nice feeling, like some sort of symbolic revenge against the English. Um, an interesting fact about sort of something else that came out of that, of that game after the game, Maradona swapped shirts with Steve Hodge. Remember, he uh, was the midfielder who sort of inadvertently assisted the Hand of God goal. Um, so, Hodge had the jersey from that match for all this time. In fact, for 20 years, um, he lent it to the National Football Museum. But in 2022, Hodge decided to place it up for auction. Um, for those who might not know, Maradona passed away in 2020. Um, and the shirt ended up selling at auction for 7.1 million pounds. At the time, that was um, a new record for a sports memorabilia. Um, that same year, the record was broken two more times, uh, once by the Jordan uh, Last Dance Bulls jersey, and then by the uh, 1952 Mickey Mantle uh, baseball card. But I shouldn't skip ahead too much more, because the rest of the 1986 match is worth talking about when we talk about, well, first of all, soccer history, <laughs> but also about the Argentina-England rivalry. Uh, so what about that second goal that I mentioned? Four minutes after the Hand of God goal, Maradona receives the ball in his own half, and then he takes off for a 60-yard, 10-second run, obviously towards the English goal. He passes four England defenders, two Peters, two Terrys, Peter Beardsley, 
Peter Reed, Terry Butcher, and Terry Fenwick. He then sits Peter Sheldon, the keeper, and slots the ball into an empty net. Makes it 2 0 Argentina. And you have to see that run. It is something incredible. It's also one of the great sports commentary moments. Uh, Victor Hugo Morales was commentating for Spanish speaking countries. And so, as Maradona is dodging all of these players, um, Morales is going, Still Maradona! Genius! 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 Da -da 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 -da. Go! Go! <laughs> he goes on to say, uh, I want to cry! Oh my god! Long live football! What a goal! Diego Maradona, it is to cry for, excuse me. Maradona in a memorable run in the best play of all time. Cosmic Kite, what planet did you come from to leave so many English behind? For the country to be a clenched fist crying for Argentina. Argentina to England nil. Diego, Diego, Diego Armando Maradona, thank you God for football, for Maradona, for these tears, for this Argentina to England nil. It gives you chills. And Maradona actually later um, complimented the fair play of um, the England squad. Uh, he said, I don't think I could have done it against any other team because they all used to knock you down. They are probably the noblest in the world. And in 2002, that second goal. Cat's trying to do ASMR just uh, off camera. In 2002, uh, that second goal was voted as the goal of the century on the FIFA website. But there's still a game to play out. So in the end, uh, Gary Lineker was able to score a goal uh, in the 81st minute off of a cross from Barnes. Argentina had another close chance. Uh, Carlos Tapia hit the inside of the goal post sort of immediately after England's goal. But in the end, England are unable to score an equalizer, and Argentina won the match 2-1. to one. Argentina uh, went on to win that World Cup in 1986. They beat West Germany in the final. And uh, Roberto Perfumo, an Argentinian, he said that in 1986, winning that game against England was enough. Winning the World Cup was secondary for us. Beating England was our real aim. So since then, uh, the two countries have met five more times, including twice in World Cup matches. The first one was in 1998, um, in the round of 16. And I won't get too much into that one because it merits its own history story time video. If you watched the uh, Beckham documentary, you've heard a little bit about it. And the second one was in the 2002 group stage. Um, and that one was a lot less uh, eventful or incendiary uh, in terms of the rivalry. It began at 
12.30 in the UK and it was described as the longest lunch break in history in England uh, England won that game 1-0 um, Beckham scored a penalty kick after Mauricio Pochettino fouled Michael Owen and again we'll get into the sort of symbolism of that goal for Beckham in another video but Argentina fans were very disappointed in that result um, but it actually led to the birth of a new sort of controversy a new um, a new fan sort of conspiracy theory and fans started saying that uh, the Argentinian player their captain actually, Juan Sebastián Verón uh, had purposely purposefully played poorly because he had to return to England uh, for club play to play for Manchester United and that he sort of wanted you know, to be well received back there. And of course, Veron has denied these uh, allegations, this theory. Uh, the most recent match between the two countries was actually in 2005. Uh, it was a friendly. England beat Argentina 3-2. But again, that game was less venomous than the previous ones. But there was still some fighting and some taunting amongst fans. And that was almost 20 years ago now. So we're overdue for the two countries to meet again. And I'll wrap this up uh, with a quote from Ivan... Lopez Muniz. He wrote for ESPN in 2017 that in Argentina, the entire nation, including the government and the Argentine Football Association, the AFA, still praises the most blatant act of cheating ever caught on tape, partly because Argentines are humans and humans are hypocrites but also because of a long history of grievances against the United Kingdom. And that is the story of the Hand of God goal, the goal of the century, and the Argentina-England football rivalry. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did and you're not already subscribed, please consider hitting that subscribe button. I'll be covering the uh, 1998 World Cup match soon, so you don't want to miss that. But otherwise, I will see you tomorrow.